kidding me? So, what? That is, oh my god. Hello everybody. So, I brought the balloon here <laughs> so that it will be left as a memory on camera if it gets deflated. It's so pretty, oh my gosh, my sister bought this for me and it was delivered to the house. I'm just very happy because it's one thing is my favorite color and I love like the idea of getting balloons for your birthday. I haven't gotten a balloon for my birthday before until now. And it's so pretty, like oh my gosh, it just makes photo taking so much nicer because you have this as your background. And we have a heart shaped balloon here. <laughs> That's not the purpose of why I turned on the camera, but the purpose is the Goodreads Choice Awards results just came in. And I know that I'm not going to read the winners until like a while later. But my curiosity cannot stand it. So I'm going to show you my reaction to the winners of the different categories for the Good Week's Choice Awards. My birthday was on the 8th of December. We had so much fun on that day, so many surprises. So yes, I have really enjoyed my 21st birthday. So now I'm going to show you the Good Week's Choice Awards, my reactions. I am not going to screen record. I'm probably just going to show like the winners up with like their covers here. Let's go. I clicked on it. Oh, it's, it's like that. Okay, okay. So, fiction. Sally Rooney's Beautiful World, Where Are You Born? But I sadly DNF'd the book. I didn't include this in the video also because it was over already by the time. I was reading it after the final round was over and I couldn't get into it. It was my first like Sally Rooney and I was listening to it via audiobook. And I don't know man, like it was just very mediocre for me. Yeah, I can't remember which part, how far in I did and I think it was quite little. And also I tried looking at the physical book, but I know that she doesn't have those punctuation for speech and everything, right? And I get very confused by that, so it was even worse. So I don't know whether I'll try it again. Are you kidding me? The... What? That is... Oh my gosh, wait, okay, so... I am very confused by the mystery thriller section because the last thing he told me won. <laughs> huh? okay, so okay, let me go back first. Ah, uh. Sally Rooney's Beautiful World, Where Are You? I DNF'd at 12.1%. Okay, so now let's move on to mystery thriller. The last thing he told me, oh my gosh, what? I DNF'd it also, eh? Like, it was the book that I DNF'd at 70 plus percent because I couldn't be bothered. Did I read the same book as everybody else? Like, how did this win? Oh my god. The number of ratings for my group's friends are like quite low. So I don't understand. It wouldn't have been my choice if I had voted. I didn't vote for this category. Oh, spoilers for that because it was interesting. I didn't have to. So apparently I have a controversial opinion. Okay. <sighs> Historical fiction. Malibu Rising 1 by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I thought it would have been 4 wins by Kristen Hanna. Oh wow, okay, one by like a large margin. Is it because Taylor Jenkins Reid is very popular with her 7 Husbands of Family and Hugo, right? Yeah, correct. Most Apothecary came in 3rd, but I wouldn't have voted for it. I, I gave it 3 stars, so interesting. Oh, I was looking forward to reading the 4 wins, but I'm going to read Malibu Rising. <laughs> Okay, I, I was quite interested in that also lah. Just that I'm looking forward to Four Winds by Kristen and Amor. Fantasy, A Court of Silver Flame won. Oh my gosh, I'm so disappointed with the winner so far. <laughs> okay, so the book that I voted for, Under the Whispering Dawn, came in second place, but the difference in number of votes is, is half. Like, wow, I, I can't believe that a court of super friends. Okay, actually, I can believe it because Sarah J. Mass, Sarah J. Mass is very hyped in the book community. So, like, a lot of people like her books. And I do like her books, but I haven't read that. And I don't think I would want to read it also, unless I like the character that is inside. But I know that that book is very thick. Disappointed, but not surprised. Romance. <laughs> Nothing is working out. Friends, nothing is so <gasps> romance. People we meet on vacation won. What? I wanted the love hypothesis to win, my friends. My friends, what is happening? Oh, I'm so upset. I am so upset. Oh my god, the love hypothesis was off by like freaking 600 plus votes or 500 plus. I'm so angry. But, uh, it could have been the 
<laughs> and it was hyped like everywhere. Like what? People who knew on vacation was hyped also, but not as hyped as the love hypothesis. It's fine, it's fine. Know that my vote is always for the love hypothesis. Okay, sci-fi, Project Hail Mary won. I'm not surprised also. That book is, was super hyped. Oh, Clara and the Sun came in second place with 56,000 votes. I didn't vote for it because I don't feel like 3 stars is something that I would want to vote for. Like, I wouldn't recommend it to a lot of people, if that makes sense. So yeah, I didn't vote for it. Horror, the final girl support group won, which is very surprising to me because I know that its rating isn't very high. And I'm surprised that Stephen King did not win. Oh my gosh. Not not going over humor because I wasn't interested. Not going over nonfiction, but John Green won. Not surprised. Yes, like finally, okay. So memoir and autobiography. Crying in H Mark 1, which I'm very, very happy with. I voted for that book because it was so beautiful. Oh, debut novel, Spanish Love Deception 1. I wouldn't have voted for it also because I couldn't give it 3 stars. Oh, the Lost Apothecary came in close second. Not as close as The Love Hypothesis and People Need on Vacation, but close enough. Oh, YA Fiction, Firekeeper's Daughter 1. Close second, Hamilton Legacy. Close third, Ace of Spades. So I'll be reading Firekeeper's Daughter. Yeah, YA Fantasy, I am currently reading the book that won. It is Rule of Wolves. So, yeah, I'm currently reading Rule of Wolves and I am taking my sweet time with it because it's freaking long. On my phone, there's like 800 ish pages, ebook pages. So, yeah, it's gonna take me a while. I hope I can finish it before 2021 ends, but yeah. Oh, Cassandra Clare's Chain of Iron could have won. Interesting. The one that I voted for, and anyway, the Wind Bros came in fourth. Middle Grade and Children's Daughter of the Deep. Oh, a close second is Bridge of Souls. Yes. So let me organize the books I want to read. Okay, from this list, I don't think I'm going to reread Beautiful World, Where Are You? and The Last Thing You Told Me. I'm going to stand by my beliefs that I am not interested in those two books. I will read Malibu Rising, Final Girl Support Group. Should I read Project Hail Mary? I'm not very interested in sci-fi, but this intrigues me. Maybe Project Hail Mary, oh, I should count Final Girl Support Group as a maybe also, because I don't really read horror. Firekeeper's Daughter, Daughter of the Deep, and Rule of Wolves, which I am currently reading, so that is six books. <laughs> I don't know when I'll end this video, because it's gonna take me a while. <laughs> you might be watching this in like May 2022 lies lies and more lies and lies on top of lies so yes you shall join me in my journey hopefully soon <laughs> several months later hi so i'm finally doing this part two video last year i made a video about me reading as many goodreads choice award nominees as possible in all the different categories i then wanted to make a part two which is this video where i will be reading the winners of all the categories and based on what i have read from that video the only books left that i have not read from the winner categories and from the categories that i am interested in reading are only five books so it's just nice mix up for one video so now the five books that i will be reading are Project Hail Mary which won the sci-fi category, Firekeeper's Daughter which won young adult fiction, Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan which won middle grade and children's, The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix which won horror, and last but not least Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid which won historical fiction. I am actually about to head out to the library to try and get my hands on Daughter of the Deep because I actually went to the library a few days ago to the Jurong Regional Library and I failed to get Daughter of the Deep because somebody was faster. I'm this time I'm going to Woodlands Library to try and get it. I wish me luck. <laughs>
Um, I literally just came back from the library and I started filming this not because I was in a rush to show you the books but because I'm in a rush to try the bubble tea that I got and I decided to try it on camera I got share tea and the colour is so dark but what I got was Hokkaido milk tea I got 0% because the person was saying how 0% is already sweet so I think it's something like Okinawa milk tea but I got this one because it's slightly cheaper oh my gosh I didn't know that it's so expensive now like share tea but luckily I got a discount because I'm a student still I got a student discount yeah, let's try it let's try it oh my gosh okay i've never tried hokkaido milk or i haven't tried it in a long time but i wasn't expecting the taste to be like this <laughs> okay i prefer okinawa milk tea but it was a good try <laughs> starting to like it more. I think it's an acquired taste, like an expensive acquired taste because Hokkaido milk is expensive but yeah. Okay. I am very proud of myself actually because I didn't borrow as many books as I thought I was going to and <laughs> I think I had a lot of clips when I was at the teens section because I discovered that they had a separate section for teen graphic novels so I was just looking at everything. Oh my gosh, it was so embarrassing because when I first entered the library, the teen section part right, they basically had these kind of special shelves and basically the books were here like on display so i was like oh that book is so nice and then i pop <laughs> and then my foot hit this part super loud and okay thankfully there was only one other person but yeah so there was one person there and i was so embarrassed because i was making a lot of noise i had my earphones on i kept putting back books super loudly and i was like oh my gosh I'm, i didn't mean to do it but it just keeps happening and i was like oh my gosh the book that I got from the teen section was Daughter of the Deep. So yes, I managed to get it everybody. Thank you very much. And I'm very excited so I can finally read this. I hope I will enjoy the last five books of the Goodreads Choice Award winners because I mean, they won that category for a reason, right? Like I know it's a popularity vote most of the time, but the fact that it's popular hopefully says something. So I will give you my thoughts on them when I start reading them. It has been many many days since i last updated you basically i dnf'd the firekeeper's daughter at like 51 percent ish kind of around there it felt very young adult and i basically didn't know what i was going in for because i go into all my books blind so when i went into this i thought it was some kind of fantasy but turns out it's a contemporary mystery not really much thriller feels in my opinion as a biracial unenrolled tribal member and the product of a scandal Bonnie's Fontaine has never quite fit in both in her hometown and on the nearby Ojibwe reservation when her family is struck by tragedy Donis puts her dreams on hold to care for her fragile mother the only bright spot is meeting Jamie the charming new recruit on her brother's hockey team after Donis witnesses a shocking murder that thrusts her into a criminal investigation she agrees to go undercover but the deceptions and deaths keep piling up and soon the threat strikes too close to home how far will she go to protect her community if it means tearing apart the only world she's ever known <laughs> i love how the first friend activity i see is i didn't dislike it it was just so boring i almost couldn't finish and that was exactly how it felt i was very very bored i really couldn't bring myself to finish it like even if i finished it i knew it wouldn't be anything higher than at most a 3.5 so i decided for the sake of my own rating and for the sake of the book itself i didn't want to finish it so yeah i also wanted to dnf whenever i wanted to and not be pressured even though that i'm doing a video that's what i've decided to do i did like the cultural representation though although it's a bit difficult to follow at times because there's like so many cultural aspects is like a lot to take in it might just be me because this won the goodreads choice award for young adult fiction i haven't continued with any of the books for the goodreads choice awards yet so i will let you know what i decide to pick up next so yeah Hi, you have joined me at a time where I am very tired but I am going to return this book tomorrow not because I'm not enjoying the book but it's just that my library loan is until tomorrow I haven't updated you about 
the fact that I was reading this yet but basically I have already started Project Hail Mary and I'm really enjoying it actually like surprisingly because I don't really read science fiction sci-fi because of how dumb it makes me feel but surprisingly this one is quite okay there are definitely still parts where i am just not understanding the science the physics but mostly the language and everything is fine it's, it kind of explains things really well i don't think i haven't read to you what this synopsis is yet but i went into this not knowing anything and i think that actually worked out the best for me because it captured my attention and i'm just basically not gonna tell you anything about it <laughs> okay i'm gonna tell you about how it started so it started off with this person waking up and they find themselves feeling disoriented and they just don't know how they ended up here i think it's a he yeah he just gradually wakes up from this coma and he starts to get back flashes of his memory on why he's there what he's there for all his memories start to come back to him and he's actually i'm not gonna tell you who he is but if you read the synopsis you would have known that before starting this but it just made me want to know as well because we are learning along with him and finding out why he is there and what's his purpose and what is happening with the world with him things like that i'm only at page 143 out of 476 so it's a really thick i'm gonna resort to using the ebook after i return this to the library and i'm really surprised because this was one of the categories where i was the most scared of reading because i just don't read sci-fi in general yeah i'm surprised that i'm really enjoying it i am excited to see where things progress i just wanted to pop in here and show you the book before i actually return it yeah, i'll give you more thought as i progress through this novel So I came here because I just finished Project Hail Mary. So I'm gonna put the book here. Okay, let's talk about trigger warnings first. Trigger warnings for alcohol, cannibalism with a scientific twist, death, drugs, fire, and burns, hospitalization-like situations, outer space version, and spiders. I actually managed to finish it really quickly because the day before, I went to JB. I think I'm gonna do a separate video on it, so I'll link it up above. I'll be waiting for the customs um, at the Malaysia customs. We kind of stood there for three hours, so we had time to use our phones and stuff. So I just kept reading, and I think that helped me to get through the book much quicker than I expected. So today I finished it, and I gave it 4.5 stars. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm giving a sci-fi book 4.5 stars. Considering how I am someone who doesn't really enjoy science fiction, I just rewatched the clip where I talked to you about Project Hail Mary, right? Where I was 100 plus pages in. Thoughts on that are still roughly the same, in that I love how I don't feel that dumb reading this book, and I can kind of understand what's happening so like the main gist of course there are still parts where there are like more nitty-gritty scientific details about what's happening what kind of experiments are taking place the science behind why this happens and things like that which i didn't really understand fully but i got the main gist of what was happening but i think the main part of this was that there was this i'm trying not to give spoilers there will be a spoiler section later but okay so i really liked the friends interaction in this if that makes any kind of sense. So there's a character in this book that I really really like and I wasn't expecting to happen at all in this book but I should have expected it given that it's sci-fi but their relationship and interactions with each other are the things I look forward to the most while reading this and it's kind of like in a flashback kind of style so as I mentioned right there are like flashbacks where the person starts to get back his memory from as to why he is on the ship and what led to him in that point in time where he woke up in the ship like the turn of events and everything that are happening i actually thought i wouldn't like it because i'm someone who would rather things to happen like in sequence but i really didn't mind because 
as I mentioned when I first went into this, I didn't read the synopsis, so I was kind of intrigued and the flashbacks kind of give you a little bit more answers flashback by flashback which I really enjoyed. So yeah, the overarching plot is really really easy to understand as someone who doesn't really read any science fiction at all and I can get why it won the Goodreads Choice Awards. Like not that the other sci-fi books are like not as good, it's just that I can see why a lot of people would read Project Hail Mary and vote for it because it's really simple and you don't have to think too much in a sense to kind of understand what's happening and the tone of the main character is also really good for me. I just love it. I can't say any more because I think there will be spoilers which we will head into the spoiler section soon but just know that I really enjoyed it and I'm glad that I read this book because of this video. If not, I wouldn't have read it at all. I just, oh my god, I really love the interactions between the friends and I just I'm so happy. I liked how it ended. The progression was great. There were kind of turns and twists that would happen such that the book wasn't the same monotonous journey throughout and I just really enjoyed it. So maybe I will be reading more sci-fi in the future but I can't say for certain just yet. I think this is the second book I'm reading for this video so I'm glad that the first book that I actually finished for this video is something that I actually enjoyed. Like 4.5 stars is such a high rating. I'm having the best time the second half of my year because if you saw from my mid-year book Freak Out Tech, you would have known that my first half of the year was kind of meh in terms of the ratings that I've given to the book. So I'm just so happy that we are getting more rated books. Like that means I'm enjoying the books that I'm reading more. Yeah, I will leave you now. You can skip ahead to the next book. But if you are staying for the spoilers, which we are not entering, so I will put the spoilers thing on screen. I love Rocky so much. Oh my gosh. Okay, so since this is spoilers, I can talk about everything, right? <laughs> I just keep trying to imagine how Rocky looks like because he keeps getting mentioned as a dog-like spider, which if you think about it, is kind of scary. But the way that they interact and how Rocky is such a pure character. Oh my god, I was so scared that it would turn out to be some kind of like betrayal thing happening at the end where I don't know, like he is trying to destroy Earth or something like that. But it wasn't and it's so cute because they're just both two scientists trying to save their own world and they form the best friendship roommate situation and they're just two brilliant minds like Grace is the more scientific he's a science teacher and he also wrote scientific papers previously so he knows how to draw the different links and try to figure out what's happening with his experiments and then on the other hand Rocky is the engineer who can engineer anything and Oh my gosh, I don't understand how the author's mind works because how do you even think about this? There's like so many scientific parts. Oh my gosh, I'm so amazed. But basically, he has to come up with ideas on how this alien country, alien planet works, how different it is compared to Earth, how they eat, things like that. Oh my gosh, I love it. And oh, they watch each other sleep as like a thing because it's a culture in Arid. <laughs> it's so cute. And I, I don't know, I just, I just love Rocky so much and the interaction between Grace and Rocky to the point where they are like best friends and there was like a part in the, the last few chapters where he was saying how he didn't have any other friends now and Rocky was like his one and only best friend and I was just like, I love the friendship so much, oh my god and then how they saved each other so many times throughout their journey together it's like the friendship is mutual and then at the end where he stays on Arid and how he's like an old guy now like in Earth years is 73 years old he has used a cane but the Aridians are like so accommodating to him because he technically saved their world and he's like the alien in their country so they obviously want to keep him alive to study him but they give him whatever he wants they try to make his stay as pleasant as possible they even offer to let him go home but he decided to stay there and he became a science teacher there with Little Aridians, oh my god, oh my god guys, with their little claws, oh my god, they have five hands, like, and how, oh my gosh, and how at the start they were trying to learn each other's language, oh I wish I had audiobook, I wish I had audiobook for this, because the Aridians kind of communicate in sounds, I, I can't imagine how the sounds will be played in the audiobook, but oh my god, and then they had to like slowly learn each other's language, so whatever sound he made, Grace will give the English equivalent of it, and it's just, oh my gosh, they were so fascinated by each other. At the start, Rocky was just imitating whatever Grace would do and it's so funny. And it's just like, honestly, without this Rocky character, without this part of the book at all, which I actually kind of made up the bulk of the book, 
I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. Oh my god, Rocky is my new favorite character, really. <laughs> I don't know why I keep trying to think of Rocky as an octopus, even though he's been described as a dog like spider. But I just keep thinking of him as an octopus and it just kind of fits better in my head anyway. But he's kind of like me of rock and everything. And I love it, I love it. And it's like a standalone book. Oh, it's interesting to find out that he didn't volunteer to go on the ship in the end. So he was kind of like the replacement, because the primary and secondary replacements for this science art department. Oh my god, okay, so three crewmates were set to go on the ship and then they each were responsible for something so they had three backup then just nice both in the same category i think they died because of an explosion and i think they were in the same category if i remember correctly so there was like no backup and just nice grace was the only like the person that fits everything so he's the best candidate to go but he didn't want to go because he's like afraid of dying but he was forced to go anyway because the female in charge of this whole operation strapped she was like i have to make the best decision for the world and you are just gonna have to sacrifice yourself for this and she was like okay before you meet the other scientists i'll just put you in a coma i'll make you forget about this whole thing until you remember it eventually but it's too late by then because you'll be in space it's so interesting that there was this turn but he's still fundamentally good and so he saved of in the end and if he didn't go he would have met rocky so like and i really enjoyed like the science part of everything like how the, the author literally tries to explain to you what is happening why this doesn't happen also this as my next hypothesis or we do some kind of experiments to figure it out and then eventually we succeed we fail i love it so yeah on to the next book <laughs> sorry this was a bit long okay i'm done i'm done i'm done I finally picked up my next book for this video. It is going to be The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I haven't actually told you the plot for this book in this video, so let me read it to you. In horror movies, the final girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll, the one who fought back, defeated the killer, and avenged her friends, the one who emerges bloodied but victorious. But after the sirens fade and the audience moves on, what happens to her? Lynette Tarkington is a real-life final girl who survived a massacre 22 years ago, and it has defined every day of her life since and she's not alone for more than a decade she's been meeting with five other actual final girls and their therapist in a support group for those who survived the unthinkable putting their lives back together piece by piece that is until one of the women misses a meeting and lynette's worst fears are realized someone knows about the group and is determined to take their lives apart again piece by piece but the thing about these final girls is that they have each other now and no matter how bad the odds, how dark the night, how sharp the knife, they will never ever give up. So this one, I'm actually, I really just started on me. I'm at page 24 out of 342 and I like that there are mixed media in here. So for example, I'll just show you one page. We have this excerpt from a magazine about final girls and i really like that there's mixed media which gives me reason to want to read it physically and i prefer reading books with mixed media in physical books if that makes sense so far my thoughts are that i kind of don't really like how the main character just says final girls the final girls are let me find an actual sentence we don't stick around we scatter we're final girls taking care of ourselves is what we do like this kind of generalization things like i get that they are all final goals but do you have to keep talking and referring to yourself as final goals i get that you are very much defined by being a final goal in this kind of situation but it's getting a bit too much if the writing if i'm being honest apart from that i am just going to keep reading and let you know my updates
Okay, yesterday night, I finished Final Girl Support Group, this book over here. I think you would have seen the time lapse of me reading this in the last maybe 50 to 100 pages. So let me talk about trigger warnings first, as always. Trigger warnings for murder, violence, death, gun violence, gore, blood, panic attacks, injury, death of a parent, mental illness, body horror, mass slash school shootings, grief, torture, child death, stalking, cancer, kidnapping, suicidal thoughts, terminal illness, police brutality, physical abuse, misogyny, addiction, cursing, gaslighting, car accident, alcoholism, drug abuse, emotional abuse, sexism, confinement, vomit, medical trauma, adult minor relationship, cannibalism, suicide attempt, self-harm, ableism, pedophilia, sexual assault, animal death, lesbophobia. A book with many, many trigger warnings. I guess you would have expected it already since this is in the horror category, which means that there are a lot of gruesome things in here. At first when I was reading it, I was like, oh, actually, this isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Like, maybe I'm just, I was missing out this whole time on horrors when I actually could have been reading them a whole lot sooner but no <laughs> i think maybe past the midway point things started to get a lot more disgusting mainly because we find out about all these final girls their stories behind them and then there are a few in particular that gets described and recounted in very specific details and i was just oh my gosh i felt nauseous i was reading it on the train on my commute and i felt nauseous after that i was like i feel like vomiting oh my god so i can clearly see why I didn't start picking up horrors sooner but I kind of feel like I want to read more from Grady Hendrix so I know that this author is the author of Salvan Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and My Best Friend's Exorcism and The Horror Store all of which I've seen around on booktube and I'm very intrigued to read more from and I think this is the lowest rated out of the four. My rating for this book at the end was 3.25 out of 5. I would have to say that the mixed media kind of didn't really do much for me because most of it was about descriptions or featuring of final girls in like magazines or films that kind of thing and I'm not really interested in that but some of it was relevant to the story itself as in like specific to the characters so I was more interested in those parts but yeah I was interested in the main story that we were following I liked that there were a lot of like twists and turns and I didn't know where we were going but I think I have to put like a spoiler warning the last twist I didn't really care for I thought it was kind of far-fetched basically it was about okay this is like super major spoilers already okay so basically at the end we find out like who is behind all this like who is trying to get to all these final girls and it's actually they are support groups therapist son. So that was the one that I was like, okay, that's quite smart and I didn't expect it because all along I thought it was the therapist, right? So I was like, okay, that, that's a good twist. And then we follow them to like this last showdown kind of venue. Turns out it's not just him, it's also the girlfriend who was the girl that was in the camp when like the recent murder happened and was also traveling with our main character this whole time and i thought they were gonna be best friends but turns out no she's the bad person also like that was so far-fetched like okay maybe not too far-fetched but for me i felt it was a bit like like we didn't need this turn could have just stuck to like the guy being the ultimate mastermind and the bad guy that kind of thing but i guess it's just a matter of personal preference maybe to other people they thought that it was a smart twist i think that was when i kind of like lowered my enjoyment a bit and also because run the things that i said about this book at the start like all the final goals final goals final goals thing i also didn't really care for i guess it's on me for reading like a book that i haven't really tried out before but i guess that's always the first time for everything yeah i learned that i'm fine with like this kind of content in books Maybe I won't give them a high rating because I don't really have the context of Final Girls in watching films and those kind of things. I can't really say whether or not I think that they should have won the Good Reach Choice Award because this is like the first horror I've ever read. But I will read more from this author in the future. And yeah, maybe I'm now introduced into this genre and I'll, it'll become like one of my favourite genres. I don't know, I'm just saying. I think we only have two books left. So I'll update you when I start on one of the two in a later clip.
it's been a while since I updated this video but <laughs> it's not gonna be much of an update also it's just basically explaining why I won't be reading a certain book okay so I, I borrowed this book but I didn't have time to get to it before my loan is up so I'm just gonna return it tomorrow and I was looking through like the first few pages maybe first chapter first few chapters and I was listening to the audiobook also and I kind of realized that I actually am not really interested in the book at all so I don't think I'm gonna put myself through it even after I've written the book I won't look out for it in the library I won't read the ebook or anything because I mean, let me explain what book it is first so basically it is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid I think I'm just very much not in the mood for historical fiction lately I haven't read historical fiction in quite a while I think can't remember what was the last historical fiction I read but I just don't think I'm gonna be interested in this like basically this book it won historical fiction it's about how this family with four famous siblings they are gonna throw an epic party to celebrate the end of the summer but over the course of 24 hours the party will be completely out of control so their mansion will have gone up in flames and the alcohol will flow the music will play and the loves and secrets that shape this family's generations will all come rising to the surface I know that one of the characters or there's some kind of relation to this and Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo I think and within the first few chapters that I read I already saw the name Carrie Soto which is the main character of Carrie Soto is back which is this author's latest release but I don't think I'll be reading that either I'm just very not interested in this because it's purely historical fiction unlike Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo where there was this whole interview kind of story unraveling of Evelyn Hugo and her seven husbands so I'm very sad as well because I thought I was gonna be quite excited for this but as it said sitting on my shelf I really didn't feel inclined to pick it up there's no doubt that this book is very popular because Taylor Jenkins read but I just don't think that this book is for me neither will Carrie Soto is back I'm still interested in Daisy Jones and the Six because there is the famous band element which I hope that there is a nice audiobook to go with so yeah I'm just popping in to say that this video is about reading all the Goodreads winners but I will not be reading Malibu Rising I am not gonna mark it as a DNF because <laughs> I'm literally like a few percent in only so I'm not even gonna count it as a DNF I'm just gonna count that I will not be reading this book that's all I'm gonna say for this so yeah I have one last book left for this video which is Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan I also borrowed the book before for this video didn't get to it and had to return it so we'll see when I get to this it might be November so we shall see this one will be going back to the library tomorrow where I'm sure somebody else will pick it up within a few hours it's been many weeks since my update for this video so now I finally started reading Daughter of the Deep and I can't remember if I have mentioned the plot of Daughter of the Deep so let me just talk about it now so basically Daughter of the Deep is about Anna Dakar who is a freshman at Harding Pencroft Academy, a five-year high school that graduates the best marine scientists, naval warriors, navigators, and underwater explorers in the world. Anna's parents died while on a scientific expedition two years ago and the only family she's got left is her older brother Dev, also a student at HP. Anna's freshman year culminates with the class's weekend trial at sea, the details of which have been kept secret. All her worries are blown out of the water when on the bus ride to the ship, Anna and her schoolmates witness a terrible tragedy that will change the trajectory of their lives. The professor accompanying them informs Anna that their rival school, Land Institute and Harding Pencroft have been fighting a cold war for 150 years. Now that cold war has been turned up to a full broil and the freshmen are in danger of becoming fish food. In a race against deadly enemies, Anna will make amazing friends and astounding discoveries about her heritage as she puts her leadership skills to the test for the first time. So I am currently 58% into this book. <laughs> And oh my god, I almost DNF'd it again. This this video is turning out to be more misses than hits. Like I've DNF'd like so many books in this video, but I'm deciding to persevere through this one because I feel like there is some potential for me to enjoy it. I just feel like there's a large difference in my interest in the characters or in the plot for this book compared to Rick Riordan's Greek mythology books with all the Percy Jackson, the Heroes of Olympus, that series. So at the moment, I don't really feel I connect to 
any of the characters, nor do I feel a connect anything that's happening in the plot. But I guess it's kind of fast paced. I'm listening to the audiobook and reading the ebook at the same time. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't think we're ending on a particularly good note, but we're gonna try and persevere instead of DNFing this time. I'll just keep you updated on my thoughts once I actually finish this book. I am here to close out this video. I think it's been long enough. Okay, so I finished Daughter of the Deep, so I didn't DNF in the end. I'm very proud of myself for not doing so. Trigger warnings for death of parents and grief, and I gave this book 2.75 stars in the end. The, the feelings of it feeling not as good and things like that continued to persist throughout the book, but I'm glad that I didn't DNF because there was like this certain part of the audiobook when I read it, it had sound effects to it when the submarine Nautilus was starting to rev the engine or something like that. So basically, it's powered by playing the guitar while Anna plays the guitar. There will be musical notes and then the ship will respond in like that revving sound. And it's so interesting to hear that in an audiobook. And actually, I wasn't expecting a certain plot twist but I don't think I was thinking much while reading this or so so it might be predictable to some but I didn't think about it. It felt like it could have been made into a series but I guess Rick Riordan just wants to have a standalone book and I guess it's enough for that because we know enough by the end to know what's going to happen after the book ends. That's the only middle book that I read from this category for the Goodreads Choice Awards, right? So I can't really compare it to any other books and decide whether or not this should have won or not. But okay, this brings me to the concluding part of this video. What have I learned from this reading experience? I guess Goodreads Choice Awards, I guess everybody knows it. it's just a popularity contest and not every time a book wins, the book will necessarily be good. I guess it's just a personal opinion, but I mean, from the books that I've read so far, I've DNF'd some, I gave low ratings to some, but I also did enjoy some as well. So it's just like a mixed bag. And so, yeah, will I read the winners of 2022 in the next year video? Probably, but I guess we shall see how my reading experience will go for that. And so, yeah, I really don't think anybody is still watching at this point, but if you are still watching, leave me a trophy emoji because all these were Good Reach Choice Awards winners, right? And so yeah, this brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please like this video if you did and consider subscribing to my channel for more of such videos. I hope you're having a great day, a great week wherever or whenever you're watching this and I will see you in my next video. Remember to stay hydrated guys.